I'm glad you're able to join with me on this uh, practice session of of my presentation tomorrow to to glorify God. In this practice, we will begin with the collect of the day. So pray with me the prayer for today. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, here are the Old Testament lesson from Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah before the priests and all the people who were attending in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing, and in the hearing of all people. From the early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster, and plague against many countries and many great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one who is truly sent by the Lord, only if his prediction comes true. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Do not suppose that I have come to being priest to this earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father a daughter against her brother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who does not make his cross, take his cross, and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives, receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And if even a cup of cold water to come to these little ones, because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth. He will certainly not lose his reward if he gives them one of the cold cups. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What is truth? Well, I suppose whatever is actually fact and not fiction. However, it seems to be harder and harder to figure it out. What I find fascinating about Google search results is that I will often find out that whatever answer you're looking for, you will have an article to support that answer. If you want answers to, as to why you shouldn't be eating meat, you'll receive many articles saying why you shouldn't eat meat. 
if you are searching for answers as to why you should eat meat, you'll find many articles for that answer. So which one is the right answer? Well, I suppose I should let you figure that out as, as because I am not a dietitian. I am, however, a theologian, one who studies about God. And we know about God, don't we? For we look in the scriptures. Now, we do have our creeds and our catechisms to help us quickly understand who God is and his will, his desire for us to live. But all these resources have come from Scripture. They are the summary of what Scripture says. Our Old Testament lesson contains the struggle for seeking truth. There are two different prophecies about what will happen in the future. Some will say, peace is coming to Judah soon. Others are saying, the enemy will soon take over Judah. The people here are left to ask themselves which prophecy is correct. In our reading, we have two people in the picture, Hananiah and Jeremiah. They're having a conversation or an argument about what does the future hold for God's people. They both had strong personalities. Even God told Jeremiah in the very beginning of his book, And I, behold, make you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar, and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. Why did God need to make Jeremiah so bold? Because the people in the land of Judah were bold in their ways as well. In their ways and their opinions and their presentations and their belief, you could say they were stubborn. They wanted to live in a way that sounded good to them. In Jeremiah's boldness, he is saying the enemy is coming to Judah. God is going to let the Babylonians take over Judah for a while because of their wicked ways. Before our scripture reading that we have read for today, Jeremiah spoke with the priests and the people in the temple. He said that if anyone claims to be God, if anyone claims God is restoring, going to restore Israel before the Babylonian army comes, he is a liar. He said this to the community of priests and all people standing nearby. Then what did Hananiah say? We, we now reach to the point of what's written in our scripture reading for today. It reads, at least the right, right chapter, chapter 28. It reads, Hananiah, the son of Azor, and the prophet from Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have broken the yoke of I have broken the yoke, the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will bring back to this place all vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place Jeconiah, the son of king of Jeroakim, king of Judah, and all the exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, declares the Lord. For I will break the yoke of the king 
of Babylon. In summary, he thinks that the stolen pieces from the temple will be returned. But again, that's not what Jeremiah said. So how should Jeremiah respond? Should he just let it go? Correct him by saying, didn't you listen to me earlier? Now continuing to what is written in our verse for scripture reading for today. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of these same priests and we assume, and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord from all the exiles. What is Jeremiah doing here? Is he mocking Hananiah? Is he giving his prophecy and changing his words? Is he giving in to Hananiah? It seems to me that he is trying to say he wishes it was true. It sounds good, right? The God who delivered the Hebrews from slavery is the same God who is going to save the people of Judah from the Babylonians. He is going to put everything back where it belongs. Not only will Judah not be touched by Babylon, the God Judah would also be restored. In other words, God will save us. And after all, we could ask this question that many people ask. What loving God would allow his people to suffer? Jeremiah continues. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and, on all, and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the Lord of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. You see, instead of repeating the answer here, Jeremiah will let time answer the prophecy. The word of this future prophecy will be, true, will be given, will be proven true as time comes. Although you might ask, what's the point of prophecy if you don't know if it's true or not until after the matter? Well, one way was to recognize the heart of the prophet. What were they really saying what was true for the people? Were they going to just be, were they just saying things to be liked more or become more popular? Now, I'm sure you could relate to this. Would you want a pastor who just continues to tell you that you are doing well And that God has so much more in store for you? Or would you rather have a pastor that talks about how much God hates sin? And how it gets personal when he talks about the sin you're doing. Now let's be clear, God does not like sin. It isn't like those who just want to do their own thing and don't care about what God thinks. But just because someone doesn't examine their heart for a sin like we do in our time of confession doesn't mean it isn't there. Everyone has their sins that they wrestle with. And instead of hiding from them and hiding them from God, we ought to place before God and tell him what we have and what we know we have done wrong. 
But then we're back asking the same question. What is right and what is wrong? Today we have an abundance of information at our fingertips and we ask ourselves, at the end of it all, after all our research, what is right and what is wrong? Is there just one textbook that we need to look to? Do we just take a poll from our friends and family? Is it the message from our neighbors and our government? There's so many governments out there, why don't they all have the same laws? When we hear so many people differ on what is right and what is wrong, I know I think many times people just give up and just live by the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. What about the scriptures or what about the instruction from churches? I think this abundance of information is also another reason why many young people don't go to church. There are too many of them out there. There's so many denominations. How is it that Christians themselves and the experts that they follow can't all seem to come to a conclusion about what God says and what we are to do? If they can't figure it out, how am I supposed to figure it out? Now, before I go too far off this tangent, let me just tell you, there are several teachers who will have their people go into God's eternal kingdom. They will get to heaven because their faith is in Jesus Christ. It's not in some other God or, or some other thing that they trust in. A lot of times these divisions are because of the response as to how we are to live as God's people. And a lot of times they don't know how to respond is because they are misunderstanding his word. Unfortunately, many people are involved in churches that don't have a clear picture of what God has to say. We can see them as their teachers like Hananiah who are teaching doctrine that is ultimately just reasoned away in their minds. Just consider the following. Proverbs 14 and 12. Proverbs 14 verse 12 and Proverbs 16 verse 25 says, There is a way that seems right to man, but in the end leads to death. I love this statement because it's so short and rather blunt. Our actions do matter. Everything we do matters to God. And that's why it's important to be connected to those who have the truth. That's one of the things that led me to be a pastor. People aren't getting the truth. And many times people are writing off that there is good and there is evil. As scripture says, all evil must be punished. Unless evil is punished, there won't be any peace. Can we then have peace in our own time on this earth? Jesus talks about this dilemma in our gospel reading. Jesus says, Do not think I have come to bring peace to this earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. Now I can imagine you're thinking in your seats right now, but wait. Isn't Jesus the Prince of Peace? Isn't he the one who calms the storms? Isn't he the one who says to his disciples, Peace be with you. Yes. This is 
the same Jesus. So after searching the scriptures, as we're remembering these words from scripture, we find ourselves with an overwhelming evidence that Jesus did, in fact, come to bring peace. So then what is Jesus saying in our lesson here? He's saying that he not only comes to bring peace, but also a sword. Unfortunately, as some just become hardened towards Jesus, they will not want to be with other followers of Jesus. They will not want to be around his disciples. As the people are given an opportunity to follow Jesus into their life, they can let the ways and truth of Jesus transform their heart. They can turn away from their own stubborn ways. Oh, okay, I see what I'm doing here. Excuse me, I have a comparison. They can let the ways of truth of Jesus transform their heart, or they can turn away from him and worship something else. Unfortunately, God will only allow people to turn away from him for only so long. By the time of everyone's death, God will separate those who follow him and those who have want no part of him. In our Old Testament reading, Hananiah died just a few months later because he continued to speak against God. He not only spoke against God, but he also put words in God's mouth. He said, thus saith the Lord, even when the Lord did not say it. I know we all have had moments when we've tried to follow what sounds good to us. But then we found out that it wasn't, didn't bring any hope. In the end, it was sin. It was a way that led to death. As all sin is punishable for death, Jesus took that punishment for us. The Prince of Peace came to the one who died on the cross for us. Jesus suffered on the cross for you and for me. And because Jesus took our place of death for you and me, as followers of Jesus Christ, you don't have to fear God's judgment of death. For Jesus took our place of judgment. He died for us on the cross. And as we are followers of Jesus Christ, We are judged innocent. We are innocent in his name. As Jesus died for you and for me, let us go out and strive for God's good ways and his truth. Because Jesus died for us, we have the freedom to seek a life that has good intent for us. We shouldn't look at God's ways as just a burden. Even if a time of suffering does come into our lives, we don't worry about who's to blame for this unfortunate time. Was it my sin or is it just this living in this cursed world? Because we are now and will be saved because of what Jesus has done for us, let us remember that we will rest in the eternal heavenly peace of Jesus Christ. With this message, may the peace of God that transcends all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Let us leave this place with great faith. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you that you have released us from the law and that we now belong to Christ. Help us always to serve you in the new life of the Spirit and to bear fruit for you, Lord, in your mercy. Here were a prayer. Father, we thank you that you provide us with our daily bread. Be with all who work and grow the fruits of the earth you have given us for food. Give them favorable weather and a successful harvest. Bless also all involved in the commerce of industry in our land. Thou all fruits of their labor to provide for the material needs of the many who rely on them. Lord, in your mercy. Give to all husbands and wives grace to live together in faithfulness and love. Bless the homes and families of your people that they may be places where your name is honored and love is nurtured. Give your special grace to the widowed, the orphaned, all mothers with child, the aged, and the infirm. And we may grant them comfort, aid, and protection. Father, we thank you for our own nation and the many freedoms you have provided for us here. Guide our elected and appointed leaders to serve us with integrity. Be with those who defend our freedoms and the armed forces, as well as the police and the firefighters who protect our freedoms closer to home. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for the keen forget, freedom of, from sin, sickness, and death that will come and fill the manifestation of your Son's kingdom. Give comfort, healing, patience, and endurance to those who we now mention silently in our hearts. Give strength, strengthen their faith so that they know that despite their suffering, they have not lost their reward. Father, we thank you for the great cloud of witnesses that surround us. Join our praise with theirs and bring us at last with them into the faithful freedom of your kingdom. All this we pray through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one, now, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And I'll leave with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>